name is Monica and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm joining you from this beautiful beach scenery because I'm going to be showing you how to make this swimsuit top with the halter neckline. This style is so popular this summer so I figured I'd go ahead and make one and show you how to make one as well. And honestly it looks a lot more complicated than it actually is so I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And if you want to learn how to make the swim skirt bottoms, I have those in a separate tutorial I'll link in the description box. Thank you so much for watching, and if you do like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more, and let's go ahead and get sewing. To make this swimsuit top, you'll need at least a half yard each of a swimsuit fabric and a swimsuit lining fabric. And if you want the suit to be padded, you'll need two bathing suit pads. And finally, you'll need a fitted tank top to use as a template. To begin, try your tank top on and place a safety pin slightly below your bust where you want the swimsuit to end. Fold the portion below this point up out of the way, and then fold the tank top in half down the center, and this will be our template. Fold a section of your swim fabric over and make sure it can stretch horizontally so that the suit will stretch around you once it's done. Lay the tank top onto the fabric so the folds line up, pin it down, and cut a half inch larger along both the bottom edge and side to add seam allowance. To make the halter neckline, cut a straight line along the top of the neckline, stopping when you reach the strap. Move the strap aside and cut a curved line that connects down to the side so that when you remove the top and unfold your fabric, you'll have the front halter piece cut out. To cut out the back piece, fold the halter part down so you can only see the bottom portion left behind. Pin this onto your fabric and cut around it to create the back of the suit, and then use these pieces to cut out two identical pieces from your lining. Lay the halter lining piece with the wrong side of the fabric facing up, and if you're using pads, lay them onto the fabric and measure to make sure they're centered. Push on the padding to flatten them out some so that you can pin them into place. Sew around the outside edges to secure them to the lining so they don't get bunched up inside the suit, and since we're working with stretch fabric, use a ballpoint needle and a zigzag stitch. Lay the back lining piece out and lay the back swim fabric piece on top of it. Fold them in half and cut along the center fold to divide the pieces in half so that when you separate the fabrics, you'll have two back pieces in each fabric. Lay the halter swim piece out and place the corresponding back pieces on top of it with the correct sides of the fabrics facing together. Pin and sew along the sides using a half inch seam allowance and a zigzag stitch for all the seams in this tutorial unless mentioned otherwise. The zigzag stitch will allow the seams to stretch without breaking. Lay the lining pieces together with correct sides facing and pin and sew just like before. Open up both the lining and swim fabric pieces and lay them with the correct sides facing. Pin the pieces together by starting at the top curved edge and working your way down one side, flattening out the seam allowances when you get to them, and then pinning the rest of the side together. Repeat along the other side and pin along the bottom edge as well. Sew along the pinned portions to join the pieces together, and then trim your seam allowances down to a quarter inch to make them less bulky. Pin and sew along the two open sides as well, and turn the swimsuit right side out by flipping it through the opening that's left in the neckline. To close up the opening, fold the edges of the fabric down inside the suit about a half inch, pin them together, and sew along the top edge. 
If the lining peeks out from the back of the swimsuit, sew along the sides and bottom edge to help it stay in place a little better, keeping the lining hidden behind the swim fabric and being careful not to stretch the fabric as you sew. I used a decorative looking stretch stitch for this, but it didn't sew as smoothly as a zigzag stitch and caused a couple of wavy sections, so I recommend you to use a zigzag stitch, although luckily you couldn't see any of that once the swimsuit was on. Flip the suit so the lining faces up and fold the top edge down one inch and pin it into place. Then fold each of the sides over an inch and pin them down too. Sew right along each of the edges of the fabric to create a casing that the strap will be fed through and set this aside. Cut a rectangle for the strap that measures the width of your fabric, mine was 58 inches, by 3 inches. Fold the fabric in half with correct sides facing and trim the edge at an angle. Pin it together all the way along the strap and trim the opposite edge at an angle too. Sew with a quarter inch seam allowance along the angled edge and one side, stopping at the center to leave a couple inch gap unsewn before sewing the opposite side. Turn the strap right side out by using a paintbrush or chopstick to push the edges of the fabric through that center gap. Then sew along the gap to close up the opening. Hook a safety pin on each end and feed the strap through the neckline, making sure there's equal amounts on both sides. Fold the sides of the suit over to the back and feed the left strap down through the right side. Feed the right strap through the left side, remove the safety pins, and tie the straps to complete your top. To learn to make the skirt bottoms, check out my previous swim tutorial and always be confident in your swimwear. Among many insecurities, I have scars on my back I never used to expose, but I've learned to be happy with myself and I hope you are too. Thank you for watching. Make sure these look okay. Sand. The halter top suit. Ugh, dang it. You had to sew this halter stop. Halter, ugh, I can't talk.